Um, okay, now I think I'm going to play Stevie. Stevie 5. Let's go, right? All right, here we go, Stevie. Let's play. Oh, I got the white pieces. We're starting. All right, let's play Knight of 3. I don't know. Oh, we got a queue of stuff going on. I'm going to look, make sure you can see my queue here. Oh, you can't really see the queue. So I, I tried to set that up in advance. That didn't really work out. Here we go, C4. All right. You know, the idea was that underneath my little box, there was going to be like a list of people who were going to be in the queue. And so that's not... Just click the play tab again. All right, let's see if that works. D4, good move. Oh, there we got it, man. I did it. Um, this is a really intense opening, by the way. I've been looking at this. I've been trying, you know, idiosyncratic people are the people who play this Knight F3 stuff. And this particular opening, I don't really think it necessarily gives White an advantage. I've had good results because, you know, I'm a fan of the Dirty Benoni. A fan of the Dirty Benoni, but there's been a number of people who've come up with tricky ways to play against this. Even maddening stuff like soon h5, h4, just like a madman. Um, you know, so anyways, I've played this many times. I think um, it's a really fascinating position. In addition to g3, B4 is a cool alternative. You know, I don't have the use of arrows, but I'm just going to tell you, B4 is an alternative. Um, and here, E5 is the main move. All right. So, Blob is up next, and he's he's going to be a contender there at 2001. Stevie, you know, one of the funny thing about this is, Blitz, you just got to move. You can't think forever about it. <laughs> you just got to go. E5 is the main move, and um, there it is. I'm on a castle. Now, this is a little bit controversial, this castle's move. Um, the alternative is D3, but D3 allows bishop B4 check, which maybe isn't the end of the world or anything, but um, that's like the key question. And now black can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, he can play knight F6. He can play even E4. You know, bishop d6 is probably a move to all kinds of stuff. Knight f6. And let me just say, my heart is a little bit relieved because I've had some people just waste me recently with, especially in Blitz, with e4, knight e1, and h5. Just like going with Harry the h-pawn. And it's pretty brutal. But now at least I can stop that and play d3. And now, like, bishop d6 is a move, bishop e7. And the tricky thing that I'm going to set a problem here for Stevie is this move b4. And this position, I think it's still totally fine for black. By the way, so what Stevie's trying to do is he's trying to cheat <laughs> by not playing a5. Usually you spend a tempo to play a5. I need to get my arrows fixed. I can't get my arrows working. Anyways, to stop b4. And so now, basically, black has an option of playing knight takes or bishop takes. I think both of them lead to kind of probably an equal position, but a confusing, you know, wild position. And the general idea is if bishop takes, I can play knight e5, knight e5, queen a4. And that's a trick you see in the Benoni with reverse colors, too. Oh, thank you, Bocho. <laughs> I'm having a good day today, so I hope I, my voice is all right. Um, and he took with a bishop. All right, so I'm going to play knight e5. And it seems like knight takes e5 is forced. He's playing faster now. And queen a4. And I think I looked at this position a long time ago, and I couldn't tell you what the right moves are anymore. But the danger is... Now that this bishop is unopposed on uh, c1, and so I'm going to have like that long diagonal there. 
Um, I don't know exactly what to do. Let's let's try to be a beast with the diagonal. This is maybe maybe that's superficial, but I did it. So, yeah, this is the terror of the unop unopposed bishop, and he's going to try to block me with c5. So I have to stop that. Knight c6. Okay, good move. And actually, I think I have some... Well, there's at least some questions here because... Black can play b5 next and actually kill my bishop if I let it. So the question for me is, do I give him? <laughs> do I give him an amazing bishop on c6 in order to stop him uh, castling? And you know what? I'm going to stop him from castling. Let's stop him. This is obviously a positional sacrifice on my part, but I didn't want him to play b5. And so the entire position, what, what white, black, white is saying is that I am going to live through this mess because his king is poor. Right? The king can't get out. So, all right, time to develop the knight. And I'm going to play rook c1 next. Maybe e3 soon, too, just to uh, try to get at the black king. Let's put the rook first. It looks bad because the bishop is really strong. Whoa, whoa, mates, mates, come on, friend. Now, this is the issue. He is threatening mate on g2. However, my chess senses suggest that maybe there's a problem with queen h3. <laughs> there's rook takes c6. However, there is also queen e7. All right, I won it. I didn't win any rating points for that, though. Let me tell you, that's kind of rough. All right, we're on to Blob here. So let's go here. I think, I, I think this is just my cue here, and I go boom. All right, Blob is from France, and uh, the French have always, in my lifetime, have always been strong. And, you know, with MVL now, I guess they have their strongest player. Uh, let's say, of all time. This is an interesting version of the French. I think this is fine. Um, I've always, like, taken this thing and then given a little check a rooney and then doing that. Was it great? I don't know. But I just want to trade off some stuff and control d5. And... Um, I'm... Yeah, it's about equal, I would say, in this position. Queen b3, okay. Well, let's not think about it too long, Cry. Um, this is a controversial move, and maybe there's an instant refutation, but I did it. Knight c6. Uh, he's got castles, he's got a3. All kinds of stuff. What do you, he castled. Now I can play uh, some trickiness. I can do knight a5, basically. Is it a good move? I'm not sure. You know what, I'm going to just take this guy. Because I think he has to take back with the queen now. Unless he can throw in bishop e6. Maybe he can throw in bishop e6. And then take back BC. Well, nothing that special, but the idea would be just whether you think BC is a lot better than Queen takes, really. This is an interesting position. If Queen takes, I can throw in Knight E4. I don't know if it's a big deal, but I can at least throw it in. It's kind of annoying. He took. Okay. So, our right, rook takes. I guess if pawn takes, I'm looking at uh, this move here, knight a5. 
and the idea is just for me to try to grip the c4 square however you know his knight is going to come to e5 so as my understanding this kind of position right is like he has weakened pawns but they're a dynamic weakness in the sense that uh, they can control my pieces as well and i think there's, this is a hard decision for him I assume something like queen b4 or queen a3. Maybe queen a4 is totally legit too. Uh, and I have to worry a little bit about knight e5, I think. And the other thing that's weird about this position is like, do I want to send my rook on a journey like rook a6? That feels pretty, uh, let's call that bold sauce with rook a6 because he's technically misplaced there. I could play queen d5. That's also a little bit weird. So it's kind of a, definitely a tricky position that's hard for both sides, I guess, I'd say. Oh, and the main thing I can't do today is I can't think forever. I really don't want to think forever. All right, I'm, I did it. That's a, that's a controversial move, I think, because the rook is potentially sidelined. B6, let's call B6 the classical move, and I'm already regretting it. I think I should have played B6. I think that was too much. But he still has to make a good move. I think that's reasonable. Now, the reason maybe it's not going to work is Queen E8 looks strong. And, you know, he's not really threatening to take my knight if I can recapture with the rook. So the, just the general dogma, right, is I want to trade some pieces and start occupying squares like c4. I think queen d7 would have also been strong. Um, but maybe they're similar. Okay. There, let's continue to harass him. The bar in numbers, I think that's the amount of time that I that each player has spent. Yeah. All right. Now, like I said, I'm a pretty terrible blitz player, but my advice is move fast. All right, I think I want that one. Because Mama told me that I needed to get my knight into that spot. Okay, good move. Now, what is going on? I'll tell you what. I want to ask that bishop a question before anything else happens. All right. Wow, this is an interesting question. I think I want the knight. I could do both. Let's take, let's take this guy. So the problem in a position like this is now uh, white is going to find it difficult to remove the white square blockade. That's the, as I understand it anyway, that's the issue. Good move. I think I want to do that. Mm. Blunder alert. I just blundered. Blunder number one of the day. There we go, people. Oh, terrible. Terrible blunder. Now I really did it to myself there. Oh man, oh buddy. That hurts. He's coming at me now. This is not pleasant. All right. So I'm going to try to hold this together by I'm down a thousand pawns. This is terrible. He's finding good moves now. Oh buddy, not good. Let's just take the thing. Let's move away. Move away. Nothing to see here. <laughs> oh, man. He's got me. I think I, that move may be inaccurate, though, because I think I wanted that. Yeah. I think I now have compensation. Let me call it that. Let me say I have compensation. This is real tricky, though. Real tricky. He's making me sweat. At least I have the time advantage. I think I'm now a little bit better. Because I got the more active stuff. And my king has the luft and he has to give me a luft. But that was pretty intense. That's a painful blunder. Yeah, it was. 
Okay, he wants to trade. I think this is okay for me. Let's bring in the king. A draw? This is not a draw in position. I'm winning this thing. I'm winning this thing. This is not a draw. This is a scoop em up position. Yep. Check to the miserable king. Uh, Blocko. Attacko. Now that was a good game. I feel like I definitely uh, misplayed the thing. And uh, he played well. In fact, it's not over yet. I have to still be a little careful. So knight c5. g5, I assume, is going to come. And I'm going to play knight e4. I think that's a reasonable move. Okay. And f5. Oh, maybe that was also a mistake. Okay, now I can play h5 and don't have to worry. Maybe he could have played h5. All right, Blob, very nice game. Check to the miserable king, that's right. Yeah, it was a cheeky draw offer. All right, let's go, and I, what do I have to do here? I go, I go to play, and, uh, oh, whoa, how does this work? I think we're playing Nicola. Nicola's coming up here. Let's go, boom. And I think I have to go to play so you guys can see that. All right, here it comes. Oh, man, I'm getting French today. This is terrible. Good game. All right. Oh, this is intense. I got, I got my, you guys heard of spin drift? I got my spin drift going. I'm like an addict now. I'm just drinking that stuff all the time. I got some coffee here. This is very enjoyable. I've played this many, many times. Uh, you know, it's funny. Back in the day, they all played DC. When I played... I mean, back in the day, I mean a long time ago, they all played DC, and now pretty much everybody plays the same thing. They play knight f3 and bishop e3 here. Knight e2, I think this is an interesting move. And there's more than one way for me to play this, but I think I've never understood this. Let's play this one and just put the knight on c5. I think that's what my mom told me to do. And this, I think, is, I don't know, roughly equal, something like that. White has to ask himself where he wants to put the light square bishop, basically. Um, and black will be looking at some point to play knight e4. That's probably not right. In general, you don't want to do that because I got one bad piece here, right? My bishop on d7. One cool thing about the French is a lot of times it ends up being what you could call a uh, Sicilian structure in the sense that, uh, you know, I gave up my C-pawn for his D-pawn. And so I actually have, in a position like this anyway, more, more central control. All right, there's more than one move. My mama told me to get rid of that light square bishop, so I'm getting rid of it. I think he has to play bishop d7. <laughs> That's right, Blow. Coffee's allowed. Coffee's allowed, yeah. Now, Blow's playing in France, so it's got to be pretty late there. My time is like 3 o'clock in the day, so perfect time for an afternoon coffee. He snipped. All right, I'm snipping. I think this is about roughly equal. The problem for white will be that I am going to uh, play knight e4 at some point. And the problem, you know, this, the knight, will have a, a nice outpost there. But there's all kinds of stuff. Now, maybe he's going to try to pop me with f5 right away. Wouldn't be a bad move. In fact, maybe I'm blowing it again here. Maybe I'm blowing it again. Jeez, cry. Take it easy over here. You're just getting popped everywhere you look. Oh, man. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm really blowing it. Maybe I'm going to have a bad day. Well, kids, 
I better buckle down because Nicholas hitting me with some moves. He's hitting me with some moves. It's not so pleasant for a peasant. I'll tell you. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I was talking all that smack about my 94, and then where did it go now? All right, I'm going to try to get fancy. I don't know. Maybe I'm just going to be losing instantly here, but I'm getting fancy here. I might just be losing instantly. This would be his moment to think a little bit and see if he can crack me. He's got queen g4, he's got f6, he's got fe. Those, any of those moves might crack me. And basically, I decided that if I took on f5 immediately, I would just be toast. If f6 might be winning, I don't know how yet, right? I don't know how it's winning yet, but it just might be just totally crushing me. And that's, that'll be a problem if it is. Oh yeah, there's some deep tactics here. I don't know. I'm I'll I will admit to fear here. I will admit to fear. Drinking a seven and seven. No, this is the this is the spin drift, buddy. Check this out. You you seen this stuff? It's like crack. It's really beautiful, man. I can drink this stuff all day. Here it goes, Queen G4. And I had a hope here, and maybe this hope is incorrect, but I had a hope that I was going to survive this position. It might not be true, friends. It might not be true. I might just be getting mated. Oof. Okay, my hope was bishop c5, and if f6, g6, I was somehow going to live through that, but I, I don't know about that, buddy. I don't know if you're going to actually live through that. That might be terrible. All right, I'm going to do it anyway. I Like I said, I I think I might just be getting mated. This is highly controversial, people. Don't do this at home. Don't do it at home. Basically, I'm claiming that my miners are going to save me, and, you know, whether they will or not, that's just open to question. Uh, the good news is I got a slight time advantage. I love my spin drift, man. I just got turned on to him. Yeah, he took. Now, I don't think I'm going to lose anymore. Let me put it that way. I don't think I'm going to lose anymore. He might have thought he could take on e6, but now my bishop's beautiful. Uh, well, my, my minors are beautiful. I thought f6. I wasn't sure if I was going to survive that. I had practical chances, but I was obviously mate worried about just getting mated with things like queen h4 and the whole business. And I guess, you know, the issue here is just he snaps on e6. It's hard for him to snap on e6, right? And my knight is a beast. And if I need to, I can even just play bishop takes knight. So this is like the, actually the beginning. We could say the whole thing here is based on uh, the notion that um, the knight is strong on uh, e4. Now, c3, good move. I don't know what to do. I really don't. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's do something controversial and just take. And so the claim is that I don't have to worry about e6 anymore. And my knight, the claim is that my knight is better than his bishop. How true that really is, you know, that's another question. This is a big question for black, for white too. Uh, I would say bishop d4 feels more natural. He took that way. And let's go ahead and put stuff on the open file. So again, I'm just claiming that the knight is better than his knight. Okay. Um, let's, let's take on f1. If there's any moral of this story, it's that I am not cracking anybody. <laughs> you know what? These games have been hard fought. This is not an easy thing. And now I'm just going to claim that queen e8, queen g6, I'm going to be better. So I, that's an old French player's trick. Yeah, we're now queen g6. Yeah, 2300 player. Anybody, but even this, you know, he could have cracked me. I don't need, he didn't need to be 2300. Now that's a dirty trick. Look at that dirty trick. How, <laughs> he's trying to mate me if I play queen a6. Not very nice. I'm going to take the bishop with the pawn, though. 
And now I, I guess it's all over. All right, I got it. I got it. Now let me go back to the play section. How does this work? I go. Okay, here we go. So we got Max coming up next. Boom. This is this is exhausting, man. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Look at that E6. Maybe he'll play. We'll get a, another French. Oh, he's one of these guys. He's one of these guys. So, um, I played recently this Denver Open, and um, I played Andrew Tang, who I think is like the world's expert on the London, also the best one-minute player ever. And um, he he played this against Carlson, against Carlson, and uh, oh, I better remember what I'm doing here. I think, what do I do? I go like B6. Anyways, I prepared for the guy for quite some time, and um, he didn't end up playing this London. But, you know, the London, when I was a kid, people thought it was terrible. But this thing has, it has some juice. I don't really know what I'm doing. Let me just say, I'm, as, oh, wait, he's got a plan on me. He's doing something to me. What is he doing? Okay, so let's just say this guy is being very clever and is going to play f4, I presume, now. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can play knight e4, too. Now, queen c2 or queen f3, I'm expecting. I would say position's... Roughly equal, something like that. I'm at least a little bit better developed. He castled. Now, castles is interesting because this gives me the extra option of hitting him. So I'm going to hit him with F6. Um, I kind of like this thing I'm doing as, you know, um, but it makes sense for me to play this way because I usually play knight of six and e6, so there's a variety of systems you can play. Oh, excuse me, the question was, what's the best setup for the lender? And like I was just saying, this knight of six, e6 thing is just something that is natural for the uh, move order that I play. There's loads of things you can do. I like, um, if I was a straight d5 player, I think I would like to do... Um, the business where you just play d5, knight f6, bishop f5. That seems totally equal to me. I don't know what knight g4 is about. I'm just going to come over here and play rook c8. Mm. I had a lot. That was, so now with f5, I take away the knight coming back to g4. So now I'm going to claim that I'm better. Am I much better? I don't know. I think maybe I'm much better now. Because now I can take this way, and this is a big deal, if I can force him to play that way, then I've got at least the claim that I'm glorious on the C file. Now maybe that's not, maybe it's nothing special. But let's, let's go ahead and try to be annoying over here. No, I'll just say, we both have some funky pieces. My, both of my minors and both of his minors not the best. Yeah, the knight on b3 really isn't that happy. Um, I'm a little worried about bishop g4, so I'm just going to go and stick my knight over there. a3, I'm just going to play queen a4. And I'll play bishop a6 next, I guess. Yeah, the problem for white is just that that knight on b3 is so funny. Okay, we exchange queens. And I think now I get the c file. Okay, he says, no, I don't get the c file, but I get this bishop. So now both my bishop and my rook, they're at least proud, proud members of the chess family. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think this is now pretty pleasant. I'm, I'm just going to take the c file, sit on him a little bit. And where is Max from? Where is that? Poland. All right, cool. Poland is a beautiful chess tradition. Rook c2. 
Um, you know, funny, interesting about Poland is Duda's, like, he's maybe the real thing. Okay, now, question for me. Do I want to take the knight or the bishop? That's a hard question. If I take the, the with the bishop, then he's going to get a knight on f3, but maybe I don't care. You know what? Let's claim that that pawn is a genius. This might be incorrect, but I'm going to claim that that pawn is a genius. And the real point is that my knight comes to e4 at some point. Let's put it now. Hey, Schnipps. This could be still exciting. Um, now, they, my mama told me that if I get the two pawns, that that's the two connectors, that's it. So that's I'm playing rookie too. I guess he's got to play rookie one. I don't know what else to do. Yeah, dude is amazingly strong. Just a kid. Um... Oh, and then some, someone saying, so one today against Mr. Duda. All right, I have a primitive threat of D2 here. My, my, my sense is that this is totally winning because he's got to defend the E pawn and the D pawn. And now I'm going to follow my mama's philosophy and just take E3. Oh, you know what? Maybe this is controversial to take E3 like that. It might be controversial. But the good news is I can I don't have to take it. Let's just go and prove the position here. So the danger was if I played rook e3, like I was worried he could fiddle with me, like rook d2 and then king f2. Let's go bring the king in. Fair enough. Let's keep bringing the king in. I'm worried that I'm going to just talk my ear off here and then I'm going to lose on time. That's one of my concerns, I'll tell you. Mm, spin drift, I'll tell you, it's good. Okay, now I think I can take this thing. For more than one reason, because now I can come get the... Uh, get the... Anyways, <laughs> there's a multiple reasons. Let's bring the king in, because that's what they told me to do. All right. All right, I don't know. Take that pawn. That way I can decide whether I want to check on f3 or e2 next move. Let's do f3. Let's take this thing. Now... I'm not being greedy. I just wanted to play e3 and I couldn't do it before, so that's why I did it. Two pawns against the rook. It's a terrible thing. It's just terrible. All right, I don't know. Let's let's go get the queen. King e3 would have been the sadist move. But I did this one. And I guess now I'm just looking to make sure he doesn't have like a you know Perpetual, not perpetual, stalemate trick. I think it's mate and one. Is your chess username the same as Twitch? Uh, I assume that's me, but that might be somebody else. Uh, yes, I got my Twitch channel is uh, Jesse Cry Twitch, you know, that kind of thing. All right, we got 1214 from India. These kids from India, man, they are all over the world. You don't want to mess with them. So I, even though this kid has a rating of 1,200, I'm, I'm taking this seriously, man. Let's see, six is a good move. Kind of tricky. And, you know, I don't really know what to do. I think this is a totally viable system. If you want to mess with somebody, this is a good way to do it. All right, here we go. Uh, E3. Now, I think maybe, let me just say this. I think... Well, well, we'll see soon, but I think sometimes the knight going to e7 is good if I can establish some kind of bishop b5 shenanigans. Maybe the shenanigans aren't that impressive anyway, though, you know. So, 
I, I think that's a good move. So I have to ask myself if I want to take that thing. And you know what? I'm just going to get out of Dodge first. I'm just going to... Mm. Excuse me for my ice, my crushing, my beautiful spin drift ice. It's too loud on the mic. I can imagine that being very annoying. All right, this man wants to play E5 on me and hurt me and take everything from my family, everything I worked hard for all these years. But it's not a developing move, and I am... I'm a real dogmatist when it comes to that development stuff, so let's see. Well, I don't know what to do. I'm going to play this move, C4. I assume E5 is coming. I, I'm just intending Bishop G5. That's my intention. We should be playing Atkins Susan right now. Oh, well, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me say this. I blew it. I thought for some reason that my cue was... Actually, let me bring this over here. I got to put this cue over here. So I just clicked on the first person. So that was my bad. Sorry about that. All right, great. Um, <laughs> I got it. I got it. I understand this now. I understand how this works. So I will play it. Sorry about that, Atkins Susan. I will uh, come back to you very quickly next time around. I wasn't looking at the, uh, the cue. Mm. I have a feeling 97 is a mistake. Oh, this is like, we're going to get some big pins here. This is going to be a life of big pins. I'm just going to assume that's the right move. Uh, yeah. Everything went wrong here for Prakash. Uh, and, you know, the thing I say, this system is really good for black, though. And I think if you face some weenie like me who wants to play like bishop f4 and stuff a good antidote is to play uh, bishop out like g4 and then e6 and then bishop d6 challenging the bishop and then if i start messing with you with bishop b5 to play knight e7 i think black's totally fine Yeah, I wanted to take instead of moving the pawn up to c5 because I get, look at this rook. Look at this rook and I want to put him on c7 now. I think what's going on, this is just a dumb remark by the way, that what's going on is when uh, you have the analysis board open, you are allowed to make the pretty little arrows. But you are not allowed to make the pretty little arrows when you're playing blitz. And I assume that's because, you don't, you know, your blitz opponent doesn't want to see your pretty little arrows. I love the pretty little arrows, though. This looks bad news, you know. This looks bad. Everything's kind of falling apart. I am allowed to do the arrows? If someone could explain to me how I do the arrows, maybe it's a settings thing. It's optional from settings. Okay, good. I am going to, uh, let's do that right now. Let's get the settings going here. Coordinates, animation type, move method. Oh, arrows and highlights, buddy. Yeah, all right. Okay, it's my move over here. Bishop F6. All right. Um, let's keep putting the stuff on the C file. That's why I didn't play C5 earlier. I played CD. Uh, right. I won. All right. Everybody, I'm playing Atkins Susan next. Here it comes, and I think I can make arrows. So we're going to see. And then DZ. I, actually, DZ... 
You should tell us your real name, because I know you're sometimes on the Twitch, so that would just be good to know your real name. All right, night after three, here we go. We got two two French players here going on. So here we go. Oh, Vaseline, cool. I, I thought so. Yeah, you wrote me a message. I remember now. Susan Atkins. Lots of different things for Black to do now. I don't have, you know what? I don't have an advantage against any of these moves. <laughs> I got nothing. I got a couple ideas here and there, but I don't really have any advantage. As an old guy, I can't remember any of the opening theory and stuff. You know, I can remember some ideas, but I can't really remember much. Let's, E3 is possible, G3. Let's do E3. Chestnut Checkers, tell you and me and your best friend to put you on the queue if you got taken out. Oh, that's a good move. All right, so takes. I did Bishop B5 last game. I think I'm going for that this game, too. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm a development... F I'm a development fiend, Susan. Oh, you know what? And I have to click on play so you guys can see the list. So, uh, right, we got Vaseline is up next. DZ Vabag. And then, you know, we'll see from there. I think, Susan, that was a mistake. And one of the funny things about learning chess is the first thing you got to learn is not to give up your toys. You know, it's a hard thing. It's so easy. You know, and even the GMs and stuff... We can have deep thoughts about all kinds of stuff, but really, we can blow it too. We can totally blunder stuff too. So just because you lost a piece, don't get too discouraged, especially in Blitz. It's just something that's going to happen. Mm. You guys know about Spindrift? I feel like I'm a commercial or something for Spindrift. It is tasty. Here we go. I think I'm threatening 94 or something like that. But basically, I got an extra piece. I'm going to open the bishop. Now, oh, where's my arrows? Oh, look at that. I got my arrows, man. Yeah. All right, people, you know, one thing that's really cool about the community here, both Twitch, chess.com, if you have something you can't figure out, like your arrows, there's somebody there who can help you out. I'm like the Bob Ross of chess. Uh, you know what? I don't know who Bob... Who's Bob Ross? I don't know who Bob Ross is. Mm. He's a real peaceful painter. Okay. Does he, like, stream his paintings and stuff? Is that how it works? I'm gonna. I'll, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna write down Bob Ross. So after the show, I'll go look up Bob Ross because that's if I can watch some guy do paintings. That sounds pretty cool to me. All right, let's kick the knight and see where knight wants to go. Now Vaseline's gonna mess me up. This next game I got coming up is a real. I think it's gonna be kind of a humdinger here. So I gotta get ready, gather all my strength. And, uh, yeah, I can take that pawn, but you know what? Oh, I don't know. I could... All right, let's just take the... It's not a pawn. I called it a pawn. I meant the knight. We'll sink that guy in there, and I'm just... I don't have any he heavy aspiration here. Inspiration, Susan. I'm just playing along. Probably put my bishop on d3 next, you know. On TV show. Cool, Chess with Chris is here. Nice, dude, nice. We're getting... This is a... This turned into a real fun show. All right. Chess with Chris better play. He better get in that queue. All right, here comes Bishop D3. Now, if I play Queen H5, it is not to be rude and suggest that I can have a mate in one. It's just to develop my queen. So that's what I'm looking at. And I, I like that the bishop touches this square, so she can't mess with me, any kind of rook C2s and stuff like that. 
his show lives on. That's amazing is that Bob Ross has got such a following here. All right, rookie one. And Susan is asking herself if she wants to take that pawn there. Susan, don't do it. Don't do it. I know it looks tempting. I know it looks tempting. I know it's something you feel like maybe you want to do, but I think you don't want to do it. All right. I got to decide between the pawn and the rook. Let's take with the pawn. At some point, I need to think about delivering mate. That's what I got to think about. Rook c8. Now, check this out. I think I have an interesting trick here. I'm going to play bishop e3, and I'm going to say I have a trick against d4, and I have a trick against queen b2. And in general, I just want to put the guy there if, if Susan just moves away. All right, she moves away. I'm just going to put him right there. Just kind of because she looks cool there. And maybe it'll help me on some kind of future mating attack with the queen, the bishop on d4. So let's move on in. I said I was going to put the queen there. Let's do it. Let's move in the rook. Oh, Susan, I thought we were friends. I thought this was, you're going to make things easy on me and stuff. This is not how, how things look easy. Man. All right, I'll take the thing. Oh, he's muting the screen and stuff. Hey, Vesseling, take it easy, buddy. We're just having fun here. You don't want to be hurting me. I never did anything so wrong to you, buddy. Jeez. Jeez, Melise. Thank you, Susan. Thank you so much for playing. All right, Vaseline. Oh, he's real serious. He's muted his screen. I got to stretch. Oh, man. Vesely, take it easy on me, buddy. All right, here we go. Get a look at the playlist over here. And, uh... All right, here it comes. Here comes Vesely. Oh, they're Frenchifying me today. They're really coming at me. Vesely is from Bulgaria. All right, here we go. He's playing fast. He's playing serious. This is a fine variation. Oh, that's, that's well, it's maybe playable. Interesting. I've seen this kind of thing. I've never understood it. Let's let's just advance the pawns because that's what they told me to do at French school. At French school, they said, buddy, advance your pawns. So that's what I'm doing. Maybe rook b8 too. I don't know. The idea is just uh, The idea is pretty simple in the French. Your pawns are pointing this direction. You're trying to uh, make some drama over on the queen side. So, you know, if nothing else, I'll do things like a5, b4. Oh, so Flo Physio was Susan Atkins. I think that's what's going on. Good game, Susan. All right, bishop b3, fair enough. I don't know what to do. Let's just continue this brutalistic proposal of moving in over here on the queen side. Okay, good move, good move. Making, doing tricky things. Let's play bishop a6. I don't think the guy can play b4 yet, but if he could, that would be a cool move. This is, this is, this will be tactical. a3 was a nice move. And uh, there's big questions for me here. And the pro okay, so the problem, let's just say for me, is if I ever play bishop e7, the guy's going to play knight h5, and it's going to be mucho annoying. Now, I didn't think that was possible. I thought I could take the thing. So we're about to find out. I take. Rakesh challenged me. No, he's, he, you can't challenge me, Rakesh. Buddy, take it easy. It can't. You and, you and me and my best friend, can, can Rakesh challenge me? 
No. Come on. So let's just say the challenge for both players is we are both underdeveloped. I'm going to take that one. Oh, buddy. I don't know exactly what's going on here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be greedy and take that bishop. Vesseline is just like going on full steam, crush the GM, attack mode, death. That's what he wants. Well, I've got no choice. Let's take that thing. And let's push this thing. And I'm not actually threatening the knight, unfortunately for me. I am not threatening the knight. Every repeat, I do not take the knight. The good news is now I can play bishop b7 and knight h5 won't molest me. You know, so basically white has one or so moves to mess with me. Well, let's try to get out bishop b7. I don't think he's threatening anything with rook fb1. If I can get castles. Oh, buddy. Did you do that, Cry? Did you do that? All right, he wants to trade everything out, and I want to have this pass pawn. I think it's winning. Wow, it's... I, I'm scared. Sure, I'm scared. But I'm going to castle next move. I could play king e7 too, I guess. But castling seems more prudent. And I just want to say that that pawn can't get got. Now, if that's... Oh, that's not nice. That's not nice at all. Well, all right, I'm going to play bishop b7. And so if he trades everything out, the question will be, can the guy approach my pawn? And, you know, try for a draw in some way. You know, the king... Or the other piece is knighty. Oh, jeez, buddy, take it easy. Take it easy on me, man. Yes. Um. I'll tell you what. Let's just let's force that position that we just got. Let's force it. Play rook here. And get this trade out. And right, I think if I hold, if I hold the uh, pawn on c three. It should be just totally toast. And I don't see how he doesn't, you know, he stops me. So let's prevent the king from touching me, my pawn, my beautiful pawn. Not very nice. Bishop d3. I gotta stop the approach. And we got to go back somewhere, either f5 or g6. Let's, I don't know, g6. I think that's the right move because I want to play f6 later. Now, I, I got to be, this guy's real, real tricky. f6, let's play f6. Give my king a loof square, right? He has to find counterplay, right? It's, um, is he threatening something? Maybe some kind of knight a2. Let's involve my knight. Some people, you know, have a misconception about bishops of opposite color. If the knights were off, it would definitely be a lot harder for me to win. But with the knights on, I think it makes life actually harder. Especially because this guy controls uh, the dark squares and this guy controls the light squares. So it creates a real problem. At some point, I imagine I'll play e5. I can't do it yet, but at some point, I'll be looking to do that. So let's just bring the king in. Knight c4 was totally reasonable. Uh, let's go play knight c4. Good move. Now I have to wonder about, like... Uh, Oh, is he going to be able to do things? All right. You know, let's be annoying. I think I'm threatening something. Knight a2 is the big question, though. And then it'll go knight b3, king d1, c2. And I don't actually, I, I don't actually just like win 
win because uh, I don't have enough control on the dark square. And this is why bishops of opposite colors can often be drawn, is that I don't have the juice on the dark square. I think knight c1 is a good move, yeah. And now, real questions arise. Um, I think in general, I don't want any kind of tradey business. I'm going to just check you away here. I guess that was a mistake. d4 would have been more powerful. So here we go, d4. Bring the king in. Jim Sataku says, never play f6. Well, I did it. I did it so I take control of the center like this. All right. So I probably need a plan here at some point, right? Let's just, let's just give him a check. This is just to be an annoying blitz player. That's the only reason to check. And to claim that now maybe my knight can go there someday. I don't know if that's a big deal or not, but I did it. Let's go ahead now and push e4. I can take with the king or the bishop. Let's take with the king. Let's give him a check. I got Veslin, very nice game. Uh, you know, you played that B4 move, it was real interesting. Maybe it's too much, actually, the B4 move. Like, you could have just built the position with things like H4. Um, but that was a great game, yeah. All right, let's go back here, and I want to get told who is on my list. So, another dirty flag, nice, that's right. Okay, uh... So, who's on my list? Someone tell me. Rakesh. Rakesh, buddy, no. You're, a, you're like a mod and stuff. You're not allowed in here. Let's go, buddy. This, so I got another serious opponent. I better get myself some spin drift. I was promised an easy day here, just hanging out in the sun. All right, this is going to be tough, guys. This is going to be real tough. Rakesh is not a man to be messed with. I got an unbeaten streak. I'm taking it real serious. Did I have a fortress there? I don't think so. Uh, there was going into the end game. I wasn't entirely certain if you can get the c3 pawn, but if I keep the c3 pawn, I think I got it going on. All right, here we go, buddy. Boom, Rakesh. How come I'm always black, by the way? Is that a thing? I wait. I was white against Susan. How come I'm never white anymore? I'm taking this game real serious. What is this? I don't even understand this. I don't understand. What you doing to me, buddy? I thought we were going to be friends here. And this just, honestly, it doesn't look that friendly. It doesn't look that friendly. God, this is already confusing. Oh, man. Let's just develop. It's a very violent man that I'm facing here, people. He's going to have to make a choice about this castling long business. I know he's been dreaming about it, and maybe it's what he should be doing, but I... Mama said that sometimes you don't want to castle long because your king's exposed. Now, you see that, Rakesh? He's like, he, he was real nice to me before the broadcast. He was like, yeah, I'll help you out with your stream, buddy, yada, yada. And look at this. He's coming at me full, full throat here. Full straddle throat. Be nice. You know, that's my advice to, you know, people out there in the world. Be nice. Don't be mean. There's no reason to be so vicious. 
Now he's that that might be a good move. Maybe he missed queen g five, but it just might be a good move to just say, you know what, buddy? We'll just trade some stuff off. Alright, I'm confused. Uh this is real confusing to me. Let's um let's just say let's just pretend that I'm not gonna get mated on the G file. I might just get mated on the G file, but I'm gonna pretend that I'm not gonna get mated, because I you know what? I'd rather not get mated on the G file. It would be very disappointing. I think Rakesh has got some things to prove here for his Miss Pawn, you know. But it's definitely still a little dangerous for me here. He could do a bunch of different things. In general, though, let me just say from a dogmatic point of view that I think that the claim I can make is that uh, the G file isn't going to kill me because I'm eventually going to get exchanges on the D file which is going to drag the rook away from his business. So, he's got some questions. Patient rhythm. All right. Air on a G5. Oh, that's right. Daniel Percy. Yeah, it's time for Cry to drink in his beer. <laughs> I cried my beer. Bishop B5, I wasn't looking on that, buddy. Take it easy. We're friends here. Take it easy. He's coming at me full full thrust. F4, I think that's a good move. Jeez. Alright, let's try to let's ask that rook a question. Yeah, that's what we thought. Now let's bring the knight in. Is he going to go back to his favorite G1 square, his hideaway? I think I'm doing okay. I'm a little worried about stuff like Queen A6 eventually and all that. Who wouldn't be, right? So, but I think that F4 pawn is kind of weak too. I'm worried about some later Queen A6. I am. Yeah, I don't know. It's going to be the end of the world, I think. It would just be... Kind of, kind of annoying, right? Oh, you know what, guys? Maybe, maybe your cash is listening, so I shouldn't tell. But on Queen A6, I could play Queen takes C2 check. That's the kind of move you see if you've played too much Puzzle Rush. It wouldn't necessarily be the greatest move because my knight would be displaced on A6, but it sure would look cool, right? <laughs> queen A6, Queen C2. Are you gonna let me do it, Rakesh? Are you gonna let me do it? He's kind of in a bad spot here. I'm gonna announce that I got a potty break coming up. I've been drinking too much spindrift. Queen c4, good move, good move. All right, let's go rook c8. This guy's real tricky. You know what, oh, that's kind of, so I, you know, that was a mistake. Rook, not, queen c4 was a blunder because I have a certain move that he's either going to see right now or he's not going to see. Um, rook d3, very good. Um, this is real confusing. Oh yeah, this is confusing. I don't know what's going on, buddy. All right, I'm going to ask the bishop a question. I'm hoping, like, no weird queen a6 hits me in the face. There it comes. Jeez, take it easy, buddy. I'm moving away. I'm moving away, all right? You don't have to ask me twice. I'm out of here. I'm out. He's taking. He's snipping and dipping. All right, I'll take this guy. I think I'm winning here. I'm going to say I think I'm winning. Now, I cannot... Play queen takes f4 yet. So let's play that move. Oh, that's a very satisfying move. Now I can play bishop b6 at my leisure. a4, good move. All right, what do I want?
Let's do a safety dance with the king. How about that? Safety. You know what? I got to put it back on play so people can see who's coming next. B4, nice move. Uh, Bishop G1. H3, all right. I just want to get out of dodge over here. Let's play either H8 or H7. I don't know. I'm going to put it over there. Queen d6, very unfriendly play from Rakesh here. Very unfriendly play. So let's go Rook c8. Bam! Hopefully I'm not going to drop some. He's just attacking me like a madman. I'm coming in. Oh, Rakesh, buddy. We were friends. Look at that. He, he, he busted me, maybe. He busted me. I'm in trouble. Ooh. Bam. I'm moving away. I'm moving away, Rakesh. What do you want? He needs a good move right here. He needs to crack me. He might have a cracker, too. I think he does have a cracker. Oh, he missed a key chance. Now, maybe I am still toast, but I think I'm surviving with that move. Oh, that's the second game I escaped. I could have played rook takes b4 check. Probably should have, but I didn't. There we go, rook f4. I got the time advantage. Yeah. All right, e5. Let's go. Oh, Rakesh. I thought, let me just say, I thought I was crushing you. You made a nice comeback. So that was tight. He had like a variety of bishop f6 stuff was going on. Uh that I missed. Anyways, he's still trying to hurt me. It's not very friendly. Let's trade let's trade queens. You know, this might be dangerous, this trading queens business. He might just be coming at me like a madman. Look at that. Uh oh. Now I gotta be careful. Alright, we're running. He's running. Check to the miserable king. Yep. I got that one, though, buddy. I got that one. All right, everybody. I'm going to take a quick potty break. I'm coming right back. I'm going to put this on play so we can see who's next and all that. And then we're going to look at the queue. All right, everybody, I am back. And uh, who's next on my list? Who's next on my list? We got you, me, and your best friend. You got to tell me who's next, because we got all kinds of people want to play. I got this coffee hidden over here. I got a spin drift I haven't even opened. So, you know, this game has just started. Mm. Daniel Bursey, here we go. All right, Daniel, let's play. Oh, I get white. All right, let's play. Uh, let's play e4. There's all kinds of things we can play here. C5, good move. Let me show you a good move. Boom, Mark Esserman, buddy. Smith Mora Gambit. Oh, it's a vicious thing. It is a vicious thing. A lot of people call this opening unsound and yada yada. This opening, venomous. I am telling you, it is venomous. Good move. Don't accept the pawn. Don't accept that pawn. Yeah. Mm. Queen takes d5 is kind of a normal move here. All right. I want to say, Rakesh, that was a good game. Pretty tight. Uh, 
You had your chance. I think you were winning at one point with bishop f6. I'm pretty sure, in fact, you were winning. I missed several tactics. Talking smack. I was talking too much smack, and I almost had to pay the bitter price for it. So here we go. There's kind of an interesting choice here. Okay, this one. I guess I'm playing knight c3. So this is the drawback of playing queen, this queen stuff, is do I get this tempo, right? So I'm going to get a isolated queen pawn position. And I think bishop f5 was controversial because uh, it's not clear what it does there. And I think d5 is going to be hard to meet, actually. Dislocating our friend the knight. And it might already be all over, honestly. It might be all over. Black has to find some kind of amazing move here. Knight b4, bishop b5, knight c2 check, and I guess I just moved the king somewhere. Rakesh, thank you for playing, buddy. Yeah. What do you like against e6, knight e7, Lord? Uh, how do we get to play you? Um, you got to ask you and me and your friend Chris. He's got some way to do it. What do I like against e6, knight e7, knight? I assume you mean against the... Uh, the Smith Mora, and um, I think you, when they play that way, you just have to tell yourself that they are not developing, and so the idea is just more abstract than anything. Now, am I losing my queen after DC? I'm going to say no, I'm not. I hope I'm not, because that would be really embarrassing if I was losing my queen here. He says nope. All right, if he takes, I'm going to give him a brutalistic check on a6. Let's give him a brutalistic check. Some kind of check on F force coming soon. Um, well, hello to you, Brig Brawl and Brand. All right. Musket hund, musket hound, muscat, muscat hund. Maybe it's muscat hund. Says thank you for the analysis of the Denver games. Yeah, that's been fun. I'm gonna do another one on my show. I do a show every Wednesday, and whoa. Daniel, you're giving up your rook, buddy. You're giving up your rook. I can take the rook later. Um, anyways, yeah, I'm going to do another analysis. This time on Wednesday, it's going to be Wednesday at, what is it, 4 Eastern. I'm going to do an analysis of my game against U.S. women's champion Tatev Abrahamian. That was a pretty exciting game. I try to cover all the games I play just to... Well, a couple things, you know, to, um, for myself, first of all, just to make sure that I analyze all my games. That's my dogma as a chess player and teacher is that you have to go over your games. Um, and also for the show, so at the end of the month, I do a show here on chess.com. If you Google... If you Google my uh, name on, like, the chess.com forums you can find uh, this thread that links to uh, the show, and you can submit your game, and I will cover your game. And the only real caveat I have is I, I like to go over games where people have uh, thought at least a little bit about it, you know, made some notes. And so uh, that's the only thing. If you write any kind of notes, I will in general go over your game. So that happens the last... Wednesday. I was getting confused. It's the last Thursday. Maybe it's the last Thursday of the month. And I have the show on Wednesdays. Anyways, you can check that out. And I, that's also a three-hour show like this one. And, um, you know, I do. I spend some time looking at people's games and uh, trying to give them suggestions about what they should have done and how they maybe should have thought about the position. Oh, look at that. Now, I have a, a Jedi Knight person who does all the Twitch stuff here, and he just posted a link there around Hawaii. So, that's there for your pleasure. I'm coming down to the 7th rank because that's what they told me to do. I said, come down to 7th. I don't even know how it's going to work out from there. It just looks like something's 
something good has got to happen once I land on the seventh there. So yeah, there's the, the link there, gochess.com slash member game. And um, yeah, submit your game. I will, I will review it. That was a bourgeois move to just take the ninth, right? I could have tried to be a little bit more fancy than that. In fact, rook d8 mate would have been stronger than that. All right, what is my, uh, where's my Q? Where is my Q? Where's my Q, Mr. Blue? All right. I'm going to go over to play here, and then I, the Q gets lost. How do I do this Q? How do I get my Q back here? Uh, I'm, I'm looking. Looking for my Q. Smith Moore, the best. You and me and your best friend, post that Q again. I don't know where where my Q went. Where did my Q go? Half closed. All right, let's do half closed. Let me go over here. I gotta find half closed. Oh, buddy, we got a national master coming at me. Half closed. We are starting the game. I'm gonna hit play so people can see. Let's play D4 this time. Let's play knight of three. Mm. Good moves. I'm just I'm just an old school guy. That probably can't be right. You know this e3. Not very exciting. All right, let's go over here. Oh, buddy, this kind of thing. Uh, I think I think I'm supposed to take old school. Why am I doing this on a stream to play this stuff? Josh Fridell already told me I wasn't allowed to play like this anymore. We actually analyze. Sometimes I have Josh on my show, and we analyze this game from this variation with uh, Timur was playing white and got a very nice position in the U.S. Championships against Fabi. And uh, the basic idea here is we want to dislodge this uh, bishop from the diagonal here and create grief. If I can dislodge that bishop, then I can create grief for uh, the king. And knight one's kind of funny looking move. You can also play knight five. Good move. I like I like knight five. Shoot, that's a good move. I maybe didn't appreciate that. Oh man, I maybe I'm the one blowing it. All right, let's go b three. I think black's fine. That was kind of maybe knight one right away was a a misstep. All right, let's play bishop b two. I just want I want to know about that knight and his and his future life. All right. Chess win. All right. What do we got? Bishop d6. Can I do fancinesses by taking on d6? Probably not. Mm. This is tough. All right, knight d2. I, I don't like knight d2. I feel like I had to have something a little stronger than that. But I did it. This is going to get real hairy real fast, actually. Oh, this is too hectic. Okay. All right, I think I got an idea. Is it a good idea? I don't know. I don't know about my idea, actually, buddy. It's a little rich, what you're thinking of here. All right, this that that's a real lame-looking move, but I did it. This is a pretty tough, tight game so far with half close. Yeah, all right, now we got to play f4. So the intention is knight c4, knight d3. Is it impressive? I don't know. That's the part about it that I don't know. I don't know if this is impressive. It might just, in fact, be really terrible because I have given him this beautiful square. This is truly uh, intense. In fact, this 
positionally anyways, this is the first game where I felt like I really kind of stank it up. Alright, now, with that move, at least my assumption was, was that after bishop a3, that I had a nice position. And now I can play knight d6 if I'm a bourgeois dude. Or I can maybe get fancy with bishop d6. Or I can just sit on it. Now, I don't know if that's getting too fancy to sit on it. This is, it's going to be an, it's going to be intense anyway. Let me tell you that one. So, whew, I don't know what's going on. Let's let's ask the bishop a question. We'll say bishop d6 or knight d6. We'll save that question for another day. Now, gf is kind of interesting, but I'm not going to do it. Actually, maybe I should have done it. <laughs> There's a problem with my setup here. There's a real problem. Oh. I shame so easy. I think he's got a good move here. He might have more than one good move. That doesn't seem right. Now, maybe I'm miss the one missing, but it seems like I want to do that anyway. Grab this silly bishop. Okay. Fair enough. And then I say, all right. You know, a lot of people think these positions are boring, but in my experience, they are hot. Like, there's, there's a lot of tactics going on. Really easy to blow it. He snips. I think I have the advantage here. But uh, there's real questions. I think I have the advantage because I got the C file. However, it is, of course, true that his knight on uh, e4 is very impressive looking. So, yeah, this is... Now, I was thinking that was a mistake because of bishop a5, but, you know, maybe he just, like, goes rook c8 or something. This is getting hot, like I said. This is getting real hot. Oh, buddy, okay. You know what? I don't know if I know what. Oh, man, I need some good moves now, man. I need some good moves. Ay, ay, ay. Hmm. That was probably terrible. I don't know about that move, man. I don't know about that move at all. That could be a move I regret. That could be that. Uh, that's a good move, too. Unfortunately, I think I gotta take this thing. Let's move it in. Oh, we got a tough challenge here, people. He's coming at me long and hard, and I think if I have an advantage, it's, it's because my king is better. Oh, that was a terrible blunder, I think. Uh, maybe, I don't know, blunder might be a strong word there, but let's go ahead and put it here. There's some, inter there's some real interesting questions here about knight c3. Real interesting questions. He did the right one. And now there's just questions of, like, can he get out? Probably. Oh, this is intense. I, I got a... Right, I'm threatening some kind of King C2 business. All right, now I'm going to go snip the dip. I'm going to go snip the dip. I think I'm a touch better. But this one, like I said, this one's real, uh, real freaky. I at least have a, a nice time advantage. Let's go win the knight. Oh, this is real scary because he can go win all my pawns, buddy. Here he goes. He's winning all my pawns. Let's say no to all the winnings of the pawns. 
That was a good move. I'm going to give myself props for that move. Still, it's not over. Yeah, I guess this now it's over. Let's just keep that knight out. That king out, rather. Jeez, take it easy on me, buddy. All right, now we check. It's not a check, Jesse. Come on, buddy. It's not a check. Life should be easy now. That was the half close. Very nice game. That is a very technical position. Uh, it's kind of boring of me. I don't know. It wasn't boring. That was a very interesting end game. I think if you look at it with a computer, there's going to be some kind of trick that you miss for counterplay. But nice game. All right. So, sniff the dip. I don't even know what that means. Um, so this thread over here is moving so fast. You and me and your best friend, a.k.a. Chris, who should I play next? Who's on the list? Wind. All right, let's go play Wind. From Brazil. All right, cool. I got a question for you guys. What does it mean if a guy has a... Oh, he's a pawn. I, I was going to ask, what does a blue pawn mean? And it means uh, he's a moderator. All right, let's play Sicilian. I've been playing too many Frenches today. Wind's, wind has a cool picture, man. I like that picture. We are halfway through the show. I'm going to lose at least one game, you know? That's just the way it's going to be. But for not, for right now, I've got big chess dreams. Let's do this annoying move. See, I'm just pretending it's a French. So now I guess e5 is the critical move, but he can play ed as well. Bishop b5 doesn't feel right to me. Let's take this thing. I assume knight e5. Oh, knight g5. Holy moly. Okay, knight f6. Yeah, looks good. Wind's, wind's coming at me. In that position, with, instead of bishop b5, I assume something like... Uh, uh, yeah, e5 or ed would have been the moves. It's kind of a trick position to play e6, d5 there uh, because most players wouldn't want to, you know, face the or do an advanced French unless they kind of knew what they were doing, right? So the question is, can White find a way to get some kind of compensation here for his missing pawns? I think it's only one, one pawn that he's missing. He trades, all right. What does commercial 30 mean? Oh, look at this guy, man. He's coming at me. That's a clever move. All right, I'm going to try to make a clever move, too. I'm going to play f6. I just didn't want his knight to ever touch me. And I want to try to put my king on c7. I could have taken the pawn on b2, but I feel like I was just creating more more drama for myself than I needed. He still has a little bit of compensation here, for sure. I have a weird problem that normally in these positions, like if he plays bishop f4, I want to play e5. And I'm sure that's fine, but I'm allowing uh, knight d5 if said things happen said thing happens so I'm just gonna develop some guys i guess but right the drama is can he create something on the c file he's coming at me full full business he's coming at me 
I just want to put my rooks, you know, d8 and c8 and try to pretend that my life isn't as dramatic as it looks. Maybe a question for him is what he, what he's trying to do, you know, with uh, all of his business. All right, I need to start trading things here because it's getting too intense for me. A5, not very, not a very friendly move. I'm going to snip on D1. Okay, so I do not want to play Rook D8. That's the move I don't want. Let's play Rook C8. It's this still a little tricky. I bet there's all kinds of things I could have done, but I guess Bishop G6 would have been... Would have been fine, sure. Uh, he needs a, he needs a good couple moves here. That might be fine, but I feel like it allows me to alleviate the, the questions in the position. And I guess he has to. Now I think knight a five is a blunder. <laughs> Bishop c five, knight a five, no. They got to worry about bishop b6. So let's not do that. Let's continue to prance around with our pawns. Maybe bishop b3 here. b4. All right. Let's, uh, he, is being, he is being annoying. We're going to give him that. Bishop f7. Mm hmm not very nice. Oh, I'm starting to fade a little bit. I need me, a, I gotta open that second spin drift here. I gotta open a spin drift soon. He's got, let's call it, let's call it full compensation here, sure. What he's doing yet, I don't quite know. But, you know, he's definitely messing with me a little bit. No question about that. Let's go over here. I'll go over here. The good news is, even though those bishops look so amazing, the good news for me is that at least uh, my king is playing and his isn't playing. That's that's the only consolation I have for this drama. Now maybe b5 here with threats of like a b bishop b5 a6. That's at least a thought. And I would have to yeah no I think he's got yeah he's got interesting compensation here. The dream is that my pawns will one day be glorious pawns. How true is that? I don't know. Mm-hmm. He's coming at me. He's really coming at me here. All right, I'm going to bring back my bishop to assume the position here with bishop d7. Yeah, all right. Now, takes. I'd like to pretend that I'm out of dodge here, but it might not be true. So... Even if I uh, don't, like, win on the spot or anything like that, I still simply am down some stuff, right? I mean, I'm, I'm only up one pawn. It's not that impressive. Good move. Man, this guy's coming at me. So, I don't know. Let's get the king out. I don't want to mess with that king anymore. Yeah. Check to the miserable rook. He checks me. I say block, blockado. This is real close as to whether I'm winning or drawing this one. He's, he's claiming it's a draw. I'm going to say probably not a draw. But it's real close. Right, so let's stop that. 
I don't know, F4. He's close to a draw with F4. He's close. Now I'm winning, for sure. I have a nasty threat, too. Wind, that was a good game, man. That was a good game. Let's just say, from Brazil, very nice game. You know, he had compensation for his lost pawn from the beginning, and that's the swashbuckling school of blitz that, well, I like it as well, even in a normal, normal game. But in blitz, it's especially good. All right. Can you go? Oh, I said somebody else. All right, Q, chess three is coming up. Oh, wait a second. I'm not, I'm not seeing chess three, uh, you and me and your best friend. I'm, I only see four people. Is there a way for me to, to see more or something? We are working getting chess three to send in their challenge. Oh, okay. All right, that'll give me a little break. Mm. That means I'm ready for the next spin drift. Unfortunately, I'm out of ice. But my spin drift, hopefully still cold. You guys, let me just give a life announcement. I'm a pretty old dude. And they hooked me into playing this nine round chess event next weekend in down in DC. And man, I'm pretty freaked out. I haven't played nine rounds in a long time. And when you're an old guy, man, that's tough. But I'm hoping to see some old friends. I'm rooming with the famous GM uh, Fidel Corrales from Cuba, who now lives here. So that'll be kind of fun. I haven't seen my friend Magesh Pankanatan for a long time. So, yeah, we'll get some people. Um, Blob wants to play again. Can I play Blob? Chess, chess 3 is working on it. Um... So that's real intense. You know, it's funny. I used to play a lot of nine-round events. And um, when I, of course, if you're playing for the GM title, you're going to play nine-round events and stuff. And, and since I got the GM title, those events were far less appealing to me. You know, I like maybe like a six rounds or a five rounds. You know, if I play nine rounds, I feel like I'm going to have to sleep for a week afterwards or something, you know. All right, give another game to Blob. Here we go, Blob. And Chess 3 can send in their business, and we'll start here. All right, I get to be white. I don't know. I can't even remember my last game against Blob. It was competitive, though. Here it comes. B6. We're going to play a little slow. You know, just because you start slow, it'll get pretty hectic later. That's the general rule. He's doing the double fianchetto, and I used to try this myself. I think it is controversial because of this move. And the problem is black has to worry about knight c3 and e4 and just like squeezing all the space out of the position and a particular like squeezing this guy. So that's the problem I see for him. When I looked at this position, I think I tried knight e4 here. It's kind of weird like knight e4 and maybe f5 and knight d6. Definitely controversial, but, you know, he needs to come up with something here. Um, just three, hopefully. Give me, oh, let me put the plate over here, and you guys can see my little list. Mr. Bankster and Jacek. Jacek, also from Poland, that's a very Polish name. Uh, Jacek Stopa, I used to hang out with. He's got, he's like a cute boy, and he's got all these Asian girlfriends and stuff. b is a nice move. You know what? I've never really thought about B5. That might be an interesting attempt. I'll tell you what. I don't know what to do. I'm going to, I want to ask you that question, though, about Queen B3. This is a nice attempt, though, to shake up my business. I like, I think this is interesting. I don't, I guess I don't. You need a good move here. Maybe a6, maybe c6. My intention is just to play knight c3 after either of those moves. And claim that I still have my space advantage. But I like b5. That's a nice idea. I definitely hadn't looked at that when I, years ago I was trying to play this as black. Because I like the idea of playing b6 against 
like D4 and C4, so I'd get positions like this quite a bit. It's funny, you know, back in the day, the computer was a little different, so if you, you know, maybe if you type in, you know, give the position to the computer now, he would tell you different things. All right, this is interesting. Maybe if I play queen B5, the guy can play C6 and claim compensation, but all right, I'm doing it anyway. Yeah, I think C6 is interesting. I'm going to say not enough compensation, but um, but probably definitely some. Yeah, there it comes. Now, here's a question. I guess I would take with a knight. That would be interesting because the bishop's not helping your development that much, but he takes with the bishop, all right? Let's put this thing, I don't know, A5. Let's put on A5. I could have gone other. There were other squares. Let's put on A5. So later I don't get hit. Mm. Well, all right. Now I'd say the biggest problem people are having, they're moving too slow. <laughs> too slow. Too weak, too slow, as Magnus Carlsen said. Um, but the challenge, okay, so this was the problem about playing bishop c6, is how do you now want to get your knight out, right? Yeah, that's the challenge, and um, you've got a variety of things you can do here. Knight e4 is a thought. Queen b7, I don't know what it does, but it, you know, at least gets your stuff out there. Um, what else? There's a lot of positions like this, by the way, where black gives up the queenside pawn and tries to claim pressure on the b-file and c-file. Kind of like a a Benko, you know, the Benko, you're just trying to divert White from his ambitions in the center and mess with him. Okay, good move. I like that move, actually. So you're saying, you know, he's saying that now his knight's going to come out. So let's get the queen out before I get hit. I just want to play knight c3. You know, maybe knight e4 now. Knight e4 might be clever. Knight a6, good move. All right, he's pushing me around. My queen's been, been feeling it here. This guy's coming at me. Okay. Now, the claim is that that pawn on e7 is a valuable pawn. To what extent that assertion is true is a question unto itself, but that's the claim. Because you're, I'm splitting. I'm splitting this stuff. All right, let's just play... I don't know. I could do a bunch of things here. Queen. I'm going to be a pawn grubber, not because I love my pawns, but because I don't want his queen to come into c4. That's my rationalization for playing moves that look like pawn grubby moves. Yeah, he's just, just making tacos with me all over the place here. Oh, look at that. He's going to try to take my c2 pawn. Not very nice. Jeez, Malise, man. Okay. All right, we'll ask him if he wants my C2 pawn. How bad he wants it. My claim I had was that that move was going to be good for me. But it might not be so impressive. I'll tell you right now. Okay. Now, I need some good moves. Mm. I do need some good moves here. Blow made this thing competitive, man. I need to get my bishop out. <laughs> That's what I need. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, let's just let's just talk to the knight a little bit. The good news is at least it looks like my king is safe. Was that? I don't know if I'm doing this right, people. I got some bishops. He's got some stuff too, man. I don't know. Let's play rook b1. Let's talk to the queen a little bit. I think I have an, an advantage here. I'm not sure it's impressive, though. Oh, good move. Good move. Yeah, nice move, actually.
Let's play that. Boom. The only thing, the only redemption I have here is I've got more time. I've got more time. And I don't think I'm even threatening queen b5. Right. Good move. Let's, let's get this c file rolling. Not very nice. He's, one nice trick there is if bishop d5, he's going to hurt me with uh, knight h3. All right, let's play old school here, king g2. And the claim is that the end game is winning for me. I don't really believe in playing against that isolated pawn, but I do believe that in the end game, it's real hard to not lose instantly with that pawn over there. I did it. Blow, very nice game. I thought, you know, you had a difficult opening. And, uh, yeah, I managed to... It's hard. It's hard. But, you know, these people are stacking stuff with me, and uh, I have to watch out. All right. Who is next? Camel Kletcher, a.k.a. known Daniel Herman. Thank you for saying that. Uh, who's next? The queue is empty. All right. The queue is empty. Camel Clutcher, get in there, buddy. Send me an invite. We'll play. You got 10 minutes. You got 10 minutes. An over the board game in 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. You're not, you don't have time for that. You can be a little late. You could be a little late. Uh, Camel Clutcher, a.k.a. Uh, Daniel Herman, played a good game against me in Denver, round one. And um, the uh, I, I covered that on my show. I covered the analysis of that game. All right. So, chess win. Do you have powers to force a game? I don't even know what that means, to force a game. Chess Gremlin. Chess Gremlin wants to play. Oh, man, it's hot today, I'll tell you. It's one of the first really hot, hot days over here. Okay, Chess Gremlin, let's play. Boom. Chess Gremlin, you must have been real sad that someone stole your Chess Gremlin 1, right? Why do you have to be Chess Gremlin 2? Yeah, because you're not, you're the original. Okay, what to do? I don't know. I'm, I'm fading, guys. Let me put it that way. It's been a long blitz thing. Someone's going to someone's gonna catch me. i got to live for one more hour. If I can live it out for one more hour, I'm going to be okay. You don't see this uh, variation too much, at least at the top level, but I think it's fine. This is fine for uh, white. Yeah, all right. Oh, man, I don't know what to do. Let's just do this, because that's what the people just do. Oh, I feel a little uncomfortable, honestly. All right. I don't know. I'm going to take this thing. I probably should have waited for him to play A3, but I didn't. And I just know that sometimes you can stick that knight in there. And it be, can be kind of annoying. But these things, these positions, my experience, they are very tactical. And hard for a dude like me to assess. Um, probably equal if you ask the computer or whatever, but kind of hard to play. A lot of different moves here. For example, even the weird looking 91 is a thought. Okay, that's a good move, too. Now, here it's going to get spicy after F5. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be spicy now. Things like D5 are a thought here for white. Yeah, like D5, and I have to worry maybe about knight D4 or something. This, yeah, it's spicy. Um, he's coming at me. Not very nice. All right, I'm just going to put my queen on e8 and ask him what he really wants with me. Um, and maybe if I get a next move, I'll 
play like knight f6, maybe even queen g6. But basically, as I understand it, it's just all about this bishop. You know, is the bishop a genius or not? That's the question. I'm going to put the queen there because they told me to line things up. That's what they said. Oh, buddy, this is pretty hot. I think I'm okay, but it's these positions are always real, real spicy. My three-year-old daughter, when we give her the spindrift, you know, because everybody in the family's got spindrift, she calls it spicy wado. Spicy wado, and that's what I like it. I like my spicy wado, too. What about e5? I assume after, like, uh, d5. Um, I don't want to play e5 to block my bishop in. And things just got real hot with knight d4. Now, I thought, we're going to see if this is true, but I thought I could take this thing and claim that my bishop is open. But it's, uh, there's, there's real question marks here. I don't know what's going to happen. So, really, the issue wasn't me so much wanting to grab the pawn, but I, I wanted to activate this guy. And so, it's this, this right, right here, he needs a, a nice move to, uh, yeah, because there's threats here. I got threats. But he's thinking about knight b5. Knight b5 doesn't work. Um, by the way, you know, you can imagine him having done this without h3. Because of h3, I got my, to put my queen like an extra tempo here. And that's a big deal uh, because I'm, you know, hitting like the g2 pawn. All right, now I'm going to go away. And... Um, I figure, you know, if I if I ever come up with a name besides just simply Jesse Cry, you know, I want it to be Tempo Fiend, because I that's who I that's who I most identify as is a Tempo Fiend. That's the one thing I feel like I understood about chess is tempos tempos are a valuable thing. Um. <laughs> Yeah. After this game, the game should auto start on your browser. Oh. Okay, Queen B3, check to the miserable king. I'm gonna run away. I'm not proud. I'm out of here, chess gremlin. I'm out of here. Oh, let me put on the play over here. Who do we who do we got by the way? Who do who do I got next? So okay. You and me and your best friend, AK Chris, tell me tell me what the I will trigger the next game automatically. Holy moly. Someone's gonna like take over my business. Alright. I'm gonna take this bishop. And like I said before, this entire game has been a story about this guy and its incredible power. And aren't we thankful for arrows when we can do this kind of thing? All right. People are buying stuff online. Cool. All right, so I'm going to play somebody. It's just going to, like, take over my screen next. Like, Iran has this, like, power to just take over stuff, and he's going to take over my business. All right, he's coming. All right, let's go. Let's go round up that night. Round him up. All right. Well, in that case, let's go back with Mr. Knight. All right, I did it. I won. Now this, now this guy, Aron Hawaii, he's got powers, and I'm gonna see. Like, does he really have the power to just like take over my board and start it automatically, man? Can he do it? Too weak, too slow. Says so Grandma, that was a pretty good game. I would say, really, if you look at that game, go back and look, and where you played H3, you know, try D5. I think. It's an interesting game there. Maybe the computer will probably just say it's equal or something like that. But I thought that's the moment where you got to go for your sack. 
um, because you do have to like sh shake things up. Uh, and maybe also knight d2 earlier, just to immediately challenge the knight, maybe roughly equal, something like that. Oh, yeah, he's got to go. Georgie's got to be on chess.com live. That's right. That's real confusing. I want to say chess.com people. Oh, shoot, here he comes. Lightning 37. It is confusing when the live thing, like why aren't you just automatically always live? That's my question for you guys. There's, I'm sure there's a reason. But here we go. Let's go Sicilian again. I'm feeling crazy. I like this purple thing they got going on. Sub-Saturday purple. Night A3. I'm scandalized. E6. See, I, really when I play the Sicilian, a lot of times I'm just a French player in disguise. Well... I guess, you know, actually this e5 move, it looks kind of silly, but given that the knight is coming to c4 at some point anyway, whoa, that's, that's scandalous. That is scandalous. He's just coming at me like a madman. Now, I think I would drop a piece if I took the thing, so I'm just going to develop my guys. And I want to say that the knight on a3 is no bueno, and that my knight on e5 is still a proud, proud man. Analysis boards are technically on a separate server. Oh. I see. Okay, cool. B3. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's bring the other guy in. This, this might have a little poison, what he's doing. He's going to try to talk to my g7 pawn. It's not very friendly when you think about it. He's coming in with a knight. Go away, Mr. Knight. I can't have it. Imagine if my bishop were on d7, you know, there would be knight d6 mate. That would be real unfortunate. That would be real unfortunate. Now... Let me just say, you should go to the center. Go to the center. Don't go to the side of the board. Do you like lines like the Khan or the Paulson? I'd say Khan is the only one I actively disrespect. I disrespect the Khan. I don't think, yeah, because I'm a temporal fiend, right? And the Khan, you're just giving away a thousand things. But uh, I like uh, Accelerated Dragon, I like. I like uh, the... Uh, I used to play Shevenigan. That's kind of too intense for me these days. And I like the Taimanoff. I like the Taimanoff as well. I think these days the Taimanoff is suffering like a rough fate with the uh, English attack. Like a lot of variations. It used to be White had to like learn a lot of different structures to play the Sicilian. And nowadays he just plays the English attack against everything. Alright, let's develop our dudes. He is going full out attack. He is going monsters. Monsters on me. Hyper well, how are they mean to you, Chess Wind? How would they can't be mean to you with the you know? Um, I think the actually I don't know what it means to play the hyper accelerated dragon. I just can imagine the accelerated dragon. Hyper accelerated, that sounds that sounds like another universe that I'm not even aware of. Um, <laughs> but I think, I don't, yeah, I think it's, that's a nice opening. All right, maybe castles, maybe it's time for castles. Hyper C5 G6. Okay, cool. But doesn't it always kind of like just transpose back if you play it that way? I would think. Oh man, now he's making it hard for me. Well... Let's bust things open. They said the rook was there to be developed, and my queen was too. My friend uh, Eugene Perlstein plays that business. Wow, this guy's an animal. He's coming at me. Check to the miserable king. And um, he's real good at it. He's written some books. He's written this one that's called uh, Chess Openings for White and Black Explained. 
Anyways, I can rec recommend that thing uh, as a way of, you know, preparing for uh, for the hyper. He plays the hyper too, and he even plays the hyper against the Smith Mora in kind of an interesting way. So he's got it all figured out. All right, I'm taking it. I want a mate now. Knight h4 or something. Okay, he's, I got to be careful. This is the stage of the evening. It's not really evening yet, but this is the stage where I could really blow it. Some terrible thing could happen to me. Lightning, Georgie. Good game. It gets, there's zero blunders. All right. Okay, let's look. This is hard, you know. This is like a... It's kind of interesting, you know. So I'm going to play this this next weekend, as I said, nine rounds. It's going to be really tough just on my body physically. And just doing this, I've only been doing it for two hours. But I'll tell you, I'm tired. It's rough. Good game, Jory. Georgie or Lightning. Let's go on Lightning. All right. You, me, and your best friend. Who do I got up next? Hmm. Here's the thing I haven't been using, but I'm going to give him the good sport thing. Yeah. That's a new feature. Um, oh. That was a long quote there. Uh, <laughs> where does the name Cry come from? It's a Dutch name. Uh, there's a couple cries in the United States and in the world. Dutch name, yeah. My... my there's rich Dutch, there's, in the United States, there's like rich Dutch people, like people who came with the rich Dutch people, and there's the poor Dutch people. And it's generally like in Holland, like if you got a Vaughn in your name, you're going to be a rich dude. And if you're a cry, you're just peasant, just a peasant. So that's what I am, just a peasant. Okay, we're going to get some people coming on. I'm thankful for the break, honestly. I needed a break. I gotta pour myself a spin drift and get ready. So far, I'm undefeated, but there were a couple games right at the beginning that I was in deep trouble. Rakesh, Rakesh almost, you know, I thought he, I thought it came great out of the opening, but then I was definitely at a moment where I, I wasn't winning at all. Mm. I've won a couple rating points, I know, it's just a touch. Now, I'm going to admit to something. The chess.com people, I don't know how they'll feel about this, but I have a secret account. I got a secret account. And I use the secret account uh, when I play Blitz because I don't want people to, like, look me up, like, say, in this tournament. I don't want them to know if I'm playing some opening. And maybe that's just because I'm paranoid or something, but I just don't want to think about it. You know, if I'm at some tournament, I don't want to think about somebody prepping me out with some crazy line. Rakesh, I am the king. Jory, you, be, you play it all right, man. I would say the biggest step for you right now is making sure you don't give up your stuff. And um, I think Puzzle Rush is a really good way to just get like a, a way, no, not a way, but it's a, it's a good way of developing the skills of pat, basic pattern recognition. Because making that first step in chess is the first thing is just understanding, well, let's call it the first dimension of the game, right? So you got material, that's kind of easy to understand. You got time, I'm a tempo fiend, and you got things we call quality of the position, like king safety and stuff like that. But the first step you need is to master the basic material basis of the game, right? And, and you know, so you just want to be aware of not dropping anything. All right, Subham is coming up. All right, so Subham, here we go. Oh, buddy, we got another, we got another big time guy here. Better do a stretch. Oh, all right, here we go. Bam, Subham. This, how, yeah. Back to the French, my friends. Back to the French. Never that Sicilian stuff. You know, I played Sicilian forever, really long time, and uh, what I'll say about it, it was way too complicated, and I learned the French in like a weekend, you know, 
I just realized it was real easy to do. And um, I've been playing it since. Of course, you know, in that time I've looked at different variations in more detail or whatever you want to say. Um, but basically, it's always been a much easier ride than the Sicilian ever was, you know? This position, gotta be equal, right? Gotta be equal. I don't know what to do. I've never understood this. Let's go give the bishop a question. This is always, th this is actually real intense. Uh, it, th this position, by the way, it might look boring, but I promise you, this is intense. There's all kinds of little things that can happen. And I'm trying to, like, you know, gain some small advantage with knight f4 or whatnot. But I, I, I'm i playing with fire here because I got to worry about, yeah, things like bishop f5. Okay. Now, am I worried about it? Maybe. But let's go ahead and sink the knight on f4. Like I said, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure about any of this that I'm doing. Oh, buddy. This could get real spicy real soon. Like I said, good move. 95. Okay. He's getting spicy on me. Oh, man. He probably thought he was going to be nice to me, but he's not being... It's obvious he's not being nice to me. Oh, I don't know. Let's go ahead and go back. That was a blunder, by the way. Actually, maybe it wasn't the worst blunder. The question is, is, is knight f7 anything special? Actually, I, since I snip on h2, I guess it's nothing that special. But as I said, right, this position got kind of hairball. All right, so he wants to come and mate me. That's very unfriendly, you know. Let's go ahead and do that. Jeez, Malise, Mr. Bambees. This is intense. This is a really tough, tough one, guys. Like I said, these positions. Whew. Now I thought, I thought that was impossible, because of ninety five. All right, I'm gonna stick by that. I thought that was impossible. My, I think it wouldn't work anyway. But let me just say, I'm comforted. I am comforted by the fact that my knight on e six is holding down the fort on g seven there. Yeah, I guess this is now toast. Toast, I say. Well, should I go win the pawn? Whew, I don't know. Let's go win the pawn. You know what? I'm not even threatening this queen. <laughs> Buddy, you're not even threatening the queen. All right, Mama told me to win the pawn. Check. Let's go back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just relax on g7. I'm in for a little relaxation, and the claim, the simple, simple claim that I'm not going to get mated. Oh, not very nice. Let's go back. Also not very nice. Uh, let's give a check to the queen. Uh, I'm going to call in a potty break here. I'm going to call it in. Any 960 to end the show. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you something kind of funny. I've never played 960. I've never done it. Let me get the playlist out here. All right, what's happening here? Jeez, Malise, these people are killing me here. Let's, let's go snip this guy. And I think we want to check. All right, now it's getting a little intense here. But I think I want that one. Please tell me I'm not blundering something here. Yeah, I, I would play it. I don't know how to do it, um, but I would play it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a potty break. Maybe they can tell me how to uh, do it. You know what? DE was actually a very good move. All right, no queen exchanges then.
Not when I'm playing with fire, though. You know? Whoa. I didn't think that was good, but maybe he can do it. His, so basically the claim is that his queen's going to go on a journey over there on the side of the board and that he is not going to get mated. That's what he's saying. And maybe it's true. Maybe it's true. Oh, man. All of a sudden this thing got more complicated than I wanted it to be. You know what? Let's, let's advance the pawn. Good move. Oh, it's intense. All right. So my claim is here, I might get my queen sight liquidated, but that I'm attacking the king. We're about to find out if all this is true. Some hectic stuff happening now. Check to the miserable king. Check to the miserable king. Yeah, we're going to check him again. I promise I'm not just doing it to be a jerk. I wanted to bring my rook out without getting messed with. So the claim is that I got some kind of mate for Mr. Tate coming up soon. I think I have a mate threat that you see this on the puzzle rush. Yeah, you see this on the puzzle rush. The problem in general is, you know, when in these heavy end games, you don't have any pawns in front of your king, it's kind of a bummer. All right, he's still touching my rook. I'm going to say check to the miserable king. It's hard to be black and white here. You know what? I got to be careful about my time here too, buddy. This is not like some given that I'm just going to walk away with this game. Yeah, it's, it's much harder to play this as black. I think that's, I think that's game. I think that's game. Because now we got check to the miserable king. I'm going to say, check to the miserable king. I, now, i got to say, I drank too much Spindrift, so i got to go five pots. And then we're going to pick it back up. All right. Check. Check to the miserable pawn. Yep. Check to the miserable pawn. Check. Check. Snip. All right, I need some more checks, please. Check. Check. This is a very efficient method of picking up pawns. Check to the miserable rook. Check to the miserable pawn. Check to the miserable pawn. And now we run it. Run it. Check. D2. Good game, Subham. That was a good game. All right. How old is Jesse? I am 40 frickin' seven now. A couple more years and I get to play senior. I'll be right back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. All right. Uh, you, me, and your best friend. Who am I playing now? There was a guy named Way Obama. I love that name. Uh, so, uh, Q, Daniel Percy. All right. I, f I feel like I've played Daniel Percy before, but that's okay. 
I, let me just pick up where I was talking before. You know, one of the bummers of my chess life has been that I made GM and that what happened was it was really hard to get like another goal. And uh, one amazing thing that's happening now is like senior chess, as far as I can tell, it's like turning into an actual thing. Uh, so that's like on my agenda. Once I turn 50, then uh, I can play in some cool events. There's like a world team event. There's like, uh, there's an event that was going on recently in Seattle, uh, excuse me, St. Louis, where they had the, the seniors play. So I'm looking forward to that kind of thing. I'm starting my train training now, you know? I'm ready to play that kind of thing. I'm into it a lot. Didn't I win that last game? What happened? I didn't win that last game? What happened? <laughs> did I like leave it or something? Oh, I did lose. I did lose. Did I walk, because I walked away and went to the potty without it being formally done? Oh man, that was funny. I took the rook and left. <laughs> That's hilarious. That is really funny. Oh no. Oh no. Now, was that a cheap thing that he did? Was that a cheap thing that he did? Oh, was it a draw because because uh, there was no mating material. That's really funny. Oh man, that was kind of dirty. That was kind of dirty. I had a clean record going in there. <laughs> I had a clean record, man. Let me get the playlist going on. A real nail biter, yeah. Queen C2, all right, let's take that thing. Somebody clipped that, yeah. That was rough. That was really rough. That's why you can never go to the potty and blitz. It's just always a bad idea to go to the potty and blitz. All right. They told me to do this thing. By the way, if you ever want a simple opening against d4, just play knight f6, e6, bishop b4. Something will happen to the bishop. It'll get traded off in some way. And then you just do this. You play d6, e5, so that this guy gets out, and you're fine. You have a totally playable position then. So that's my cheap way of avoiding any and all opening theory. What do I think about this position? I don't know. It's probably roughly equal or something. Um, I don't know where to put my guys, though. Let's, let's just put him here and see how he reacts. Maybe e4 is a threat, but probably not. I think I want to do things like rook a, e8, and then queen g6 or h6, and then e4 to play for the initiative. h3 might mess with that plan, though, because I don't really want to Oh, you know, in H3, maybe I just go back. All right, here we go. Rook over. Can I say the moves again? So, simple thing. If you want a very simple repertoire for black. Oh, that doesn't look right. I'm going to snip on F3. By the way, Daniel, you're playing a good game here. Um, if you want a very simple repertoire for black against D4, play uh, just knight F6, E6, and then do a check on B4. Uh, he'll you, your bishop will evaporate whether it's the knight comes to c3 or d2 it'll eventually go and then you play d6 e5 to let the other bishop out and you know that's what I did here and obviously it went well for me here it's not over I just have a nice position but that's just a simple way of playing and the bummer here for black is that uh, that bishop is so bad it's not just that my knight is beautiful it's that his knight is his bishop is so terrible Mm. All 
you could call it... Why am I not calling it the BOGO, actually? That's an interesting question. Um, because you can also do it with... It's the same thing with the uh, Nimzo Indian, right? You're still going to play bishop b4. If the bishop will evaporate at some point, and then you play, uh, you know, basic stuff. Oh, what am I doing here? I need a plan, people. I need a plan. You know what? I'm going to do something controversial. I'm going to play c5. Um, and then you do the same, same thing. You play d6, e5. So what I, what I mean by that is like in every Nimzo variation, that will work out is the amazing thing, right? So it works out in all the Nimzo variations. And uh, so it just becomes a real simple way to simplify your life, right? If you don't want to learn anything. And the cool thing about d6, e5 is the pawns are pointing that way, i.e. towards the king. So you often get good attacking chances. All right, let's take this thing. His bishop has improved a little bit. Let's give him that. And um, I think it's positionally lost. That might be a big word to say that, but, you know, black is going to do things like rook d6, rook d8, and it's just going to be a real pain here for um, white to, to deal with the, the beautiful knight. I could have even taken c4, but honestly, I just wasn't interested. Okay, good game, Daniel. That was a good game. I think actually, you know, I don't remember things that well because I'm an old man, but I think you played a lot better in that game than the first game. All right, who is in the queue? Sub him. Oh, we're going to get sub him again. Dude, he was, he kind of came at me last time. So let's do sub him again. Oh, I have to play black again. You know, we've had almost, I was going to say almost everybody played e4 against me. That's not true. I've had a bunch. Oh, tricky. <coughs> Tricky with the knight c3. All right, here we go. Maybe I'll trick him into a French. We'll see. Oh, man, look at this guy. Look at this guy. All right, check to the bishop. Check. All right, castles. Get me out of here. Uh, I don't know what to do. Let's play c6. This is, this is kind of weenie chess. I don't know what I'm doing here. Knight d7 is interesting. He does it. Oh, man. He actually has kind of an interesting position. Let's roll. Let's roll. Oh, something's coming at me. Okay. Let's ask that knight a question. And let's ask that question. Two of us can play the F5 game, my friend. <laughs> well, yeah, I can do it too. I think I have a small advantage, but this position is pretty hectic. Now, I do not understand. He's trying to mate me or something. It's very unfriendly, but I don't understand how he's going to do it. So, all right, here we go. Boom. Maybe he just he wants some brutalistic knight F3 stuff and just hurt me real bad. Maybe you can play chess that way. Oh, this is pretty crazy. So the drama with that move is now I don't know how the knight on d2 gets into the game. And my unopposed bishop, I think, is someday going to be a force over here. And, of course, there's the CD threat to worry about. I'm going to say I thought the CD thing was a big deal. So let's go ahead and, and come in. I'm, I'm real tired, too, by the way. I can imagine myself just dropping something real soon. Oh, he's coming at me. <clears throat> okay. I have to worry about this square and such. And such. So... Mm, my queen is going to get, uh, he's going to talk to my queen. You know what? I'm just, I'm just going to take this thing. I did it. My problem. It. I did it. It's kind of, yeah, it's sort of like, what is white going to do here? 
he might find a way to get compensation. The, the hard thing for him, I think, is just how... Oh, he's talking to me again over here. Is how is he going to attack the king? There might be some way, but it seems difficult. The rooks are all kind of hanging out over there. And this is a blitz game, though. This Anything can happen now. Here he comes. All right. Jeez, man, he's coming at me. So... I really wanted to take that uh, knight on e5, but I guess I'm not going to do it. And the pawn on f4, I was also dreaming about that thing. So I feel like I'm winning here, but this thing is a spicy situation. Definitely. Yep, here he comes. I'm going to take that thing now. I'm going to talk to the rook. Bishop a6 might have been clever. You know, I'm going to go ahead and do it. This is just a cheapo. That's all that is. That's all that is. But, I, you know, I'm a French player, so I dream about getting that bishop active. That's what I'm doing. Can you see who sent in challenges? Well, I just see... I just see who uh, put in the, you know, is on this playlist over here. That's all I got. And Blob is on the record for wanting to do a 960 game. I've never done it, but, you know, if he's on the list. Now, I had a dirty trick in mind here. I hope I'm, sometimes on these kinds of things, I'm tricking myself. But this is just too beautiful. I've played enough Puzzle Rush. Bang, let's go. Oh, no, I hung my queen. Oh, no. I think I, the bummer is I'm attacking his knight. That's the thing I'm actually doing. I'm attacking his knight. He might have some move here, but basically he needs to defend that knight somehow or like start, I don't know, wrecking me. It's kind of a bummer. That I think I think it was a crushing blow and I'm just going to claim Bishop b5 is, felt kind of cheap, but I was activating the guy. I was activating him. King of the Hill. I don't even know about King of the Hill. You know, one thing as an old man, I'll say this is I've had chess friends tell me stuff like, oh, you should play, uh, you know, oh, look at that spicy move. Holy Pacholi. Oh, man, he's coming for me, dude. That's. Holy, holy, man, look at that. Now, the weird thing is, he's not, no, he's definitely threatening something. It's called your queen, buddy. Um, holy smokes. Oh, man, I gotta, I gotta officially announce. <laughs> I got a little bit of fear here. Hold on, people. Hold on. I might be getting mated. This is what happens when you try to get too fancy. Oh, that was a that was a nice move, man. Okay, so great position. If queen b three, I have to worry about rook e seven. I figure, and that's a real problem for me. So I'm gonna try to survive this thing. I'm gonna play queen e two. Check to the miserable queen. You know what he might have here, bro? He might have a real swinger with Rook E7. Maybe he's listening. I shouldn't be saying it. But Rook E7 looks like, holy bejesus Moses. No, I don't think it works, though, because I can take... There's no... On the discovery, I can always take the bishop. So I, I probably just confused him if he's listening here. Queen G5, I assumed, was the natural move. And then I was thinking about Rook F7. And the, the party is still going to go on. Oh, and you know, I might have a problem. There, I don't think that works, buddy, but we're about to find out. Check the miserable king. Oh, nice. Look at that, with 30 seconds left. Very nice game, Subham. That was good, dude. That was good. That's the second draw. I got cheap skated out of the second draw. 
This one was well earned, though. Can I offer him a draw? I guess it's just going to happen. Very nice game, man. Very nice game. Um, yeah, my whole thing with Queen A2, a little bit more fancy than it needed to be, right? That's okay. All right. That was a great game, Southern, yeah. Okay, he earns a second draw. Oh, was he the first? He, he did me. Was he the guy who did me wrong the first time? He was there. Some of them did me wrong twice. That's cold, man. That's really cold. Okay, who's on my queue? Play Blobe. All right, people, this is it. You get to witness it here. This is my first uh, Chess 960 game ever. All right, here we go. Holy, holy manosis, what's going on here, man? Okay, so I guess the deal is it's got to be symmetrical. All right. This is fun. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that one. I'm going to play the grob. I think that's a good move, the grob opening. Holy, this is crazy. Yeah, this is totally nuts, people. Knight b3, right? I'm going to bring out Mr. Knight. This is complicated. He's bringing out Mr. Knight. Whew. This is fun. Okay. Knight c6. Let's bring my dudes out. Wait a second. Time out. Time out. The guy castled? How how do you do that? Wait, <laughs> how do you, wait, I gotta go back. How do you do that? Holy holy. Dang. Alright, so I get to do it too? How do I do it? Like that? Uh how do I castle, buddy? How do I castle? Put king on top of rook. Alright, let's do it. Oh man! That's cool, man. No, I didn't know about that. That's hot. I'm, I'm playing here. This is great. All right. He's getting violent. He defended his e4 pawn. d4 pawn. This is, this is definitely a violent position. All right. I'm going to get violent, too. This is, yeah, this is intense. I feel like I like my position better, but, you know. Oh, buddy. Let's, uh, let's go talk to that rook. Blob, I want to say, you know, I, thank you for turning me on to this. You know, so, so I'll just a little back up. The reason I was, I was not prejudiced, but, look, you know, like I've got friends and they're like, you got to play Go and you got to play all these other games and... It's not like I don't believe that those are cool games. You know, I'm sure they're cool games. But, you know, for me, it's like I just feel like chess is complicated enough. But this is definitely, I'm going to call this still chess. This is like, yeah, this is fun. It's kind of interesting, yeah. All right, let's, let's sink our bishop in there. Bischofsky. Now, the cool thing he's got is he's got a knight going to c5 someday. And I don't know how special it is, but it's definitely not nothing. All right, he took. Now, I don't like that move because I get to control that square. So his rook's funny. I'm going to claim I'm a little bit better. I'm going to claim a little bit better. Wow, this is amazing. It kind of, kind of, sort of looks like a real chess position. Ah, uh, someone clipped the thing, man. <laughs> That's funny, man. Okay. Oh, Rook D3. I'm not paying attention, and soon I'm going to lose on time again or something. Okay, I'm going to play Rook E8. The claim is what? My king's a little bit better. This bishop's kind of funny. 
My knight on c6 needs a, a goal in life. Oh, this is real fun. You know, it's, I think it's easy to drop pieces here because, you know, you're not you're kind of used to different things. So I'm like thinking about rookie two, but the queen's there, buddy, and uh, it's because normally you don't see a queen on f f one. All right, let's. I don't know what to do here. I'm just gonna try to bring my dudes out. F four, right. My intention, anyway, was just to block it all up here. This is fun. Totally cool. Thank you for... Turning me on to this. All right, queen f2, good enough. Rook e4, because that's what they told me to do. It's funny here, actually. I want to play d5 at some point. Oh, I think I, he might have tricked me here, man. This guy might have tricked me. Oh, I think I blundered d5. Yeah, I think I blundered that move. And now I, now I told him about it, which is even worse. All right, let's play d5 ourselves then. Yeah, d5 and then hitting this pawn. That's yes, yeah, so it's like you got to relearn your basic chess patterns, I guess, in this thing. Now, the bummer for him is knight c5. I think I win the pawn, but he wants that knight c5 real bad, so he should be looking to find a way to make it work. W one thing I like about my opening was the grob was kind of cool here with the bishop. Now I think he just blundered. He did blunt my bishop, which has been the bane of his existence, but I think rookie one wins the day now. Always play king b8, that's right, even in 960, that's right. Good game, Blob. Thank you again for turning me on to that. Um, what's cool about playing it online too is you don't have to worry about setting up the position and uh, you don't need to worry about the castling rules, which I have no idea about, right? You just do it. So that, that was, again, that was cool. All right. That's fun. Well, like I said, there's a lot of games out there. And to me, chess is in itself, you know, complicated enough, you know, that I don't feel like I never, I don't feel a need <laughs> to do other things. How did I learn? Oh. I have to learn French. That's not a question for me. Um, someone should tell me who's up next. Maybe we'll get another 960 game in here. All right. So, some people are saying they challenge me. I guess, you know, from Subham. All right, Subham. Here he comes. I'm going to get revenge this time. This time I'm taking this seriously. I've had enough. It's getting real now. Let's go. Bam. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just angry at this point. You've broken the rules, Subham. You've broken the rules, buddy. Here it comes. I'm not going to lose any time. I'm just going to go bam, bam, bam. He's not, he's not messing around either. This is, this has now become a very serious fight. He's playing a good game. He's playing a good game. Dang, he's fast. All right. Check to the miserable knight. Oh, man, this is going to get intense real fast here. Right. I think I'm winning the pawn, but I don't know. Oh, no, I'm not. He's got tricks. Good game. Good game. All right. Well, I don't know if this works, people, but bam, let's go. I think there might be a hidden problem with this move. There might be a hidden problem with this stinker.
Maybe it's all right. The thing was, maybe he's listening to me, so I shouldn't tell him, but knight d5, e4, knight f4, rook d8, knight e2 check, king h1, and then take on d8. So that worries me, so I'm going to do it this way. And, uh, right, I feel like it's more than winning a pawn. It's like I get my business. I get either the, yeah, it looks like, he needs some. he needs a, a miracle move here. Because if I get, yeah, if I get my rollers or I get a rook on d5. Subham, you've done me wrong. You've done me wrong, Subham. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yep, some of them. Resign and challenge me to a chess 960 game. We should do that. We can challenge me to a 960 game. Let's see who we got lined up here. See, this is where I get overconfident. I start taking bathroom breaks before the game's actually over. Okay, I'm going to take that thing. Bam. I think this is over. Rook, on, Rook is coming to d7. Yep. He's not he's not gonna give up though. You can feel it, right? He's gonna try to sit on me and uh try to live through this one. This game isn't over. Let's get the let's get things rolling. They say a rook on the seventh is a good thing. This game truly isn't over. Because my pawn is less impressive than one might think. So yeah, I'm gonna have to be a little creative here. I'm gonna have to get, uh, I have to control the counterplay and uh, make my own pawns geniuses over there. And they're not like, it's not immediately obvious that they're geniuses. But Big picture, right, I want to make his king bad, right? I want to make his king bad using my pawns. Should be winning, especially not just because of the pawn, but because of my fancy rook. But this, this game isn't over. Not over. The variants teach different skills. The four-player chess. Oh, yeah. I don't even know about that either. So I'm ignorant about this kind of stuff. Oh, is it my move? What happened? What'd he do? Wait. What'd he do? He played a6. That was tricky. Okay, king f2. He needs a way to get counterplay, and it's not kind of hard. Okay, I like that move. That's good. Man, he's making my life hard. Um, let's go take this thing. Mm. All right, now my claim is that no way can you play with that thing pinned. Actually, I feel pretty strongly about that. That's too strong of a pin. Um... All right, let's go here. Let's take the thing. And let's do that. I think that's a bone crusher right there. Subham, you're probably going to trick me. You're probably going to trick me again, but I've had enough. I'm done with being messed with. White is up a king, that's right. Globe is in for one more crushing, and then it's all me. All right. Yeah, no one else wants it. I'm ready for another one. All right, bishop a3 has got to be a good move. Check to the miserable pawn on f7. Get back. What is he doing? I don't know. 
Good game, some. I'm sorry I talked all that smack. You know, I meant it all in good fun. He wants a rematch. <laughs> That's rough, so hold on, man. Um, all right, we got we got uh, Vessel Nicola. Let's play Nicola, who's played once before. I forgot our game already. I gotta be careful. I'm getting tired. Whew, it's hot in this room. It's humid here in Baltimore. It's a terrible place. East Coast, United States. I didn't come here by choice. The lady made me do it. But here I am. Okay, here we go. G6, good move. I'm gonna play this tricky business on you, Nicola. Here, Black's got a big choice. Vigorito played C5. I covered that game, actually, in the last uh, show. D6, of course, is a fine move. Um, and now what we have is like a reversed French, but now Black changed it up on me totally with C5. All right, that's, that's an offer I can't refuse with D5. You know, this is actually playable. Um, in a similar position, Golko played knight a5, where, yeah, I think that, that knight a5 might have been an interesting option. It looks weird, but it's an, a, kind of an ancient Russian plan in that position. Here I feel like white's got to be pretty good. I'm going to play bishop e3 and such. Hey, what's wrong with the East Coast? You know, I grew up on in Santa Fe, and I lived on the West Coast, and it's humid here. It's nasty. Uh, <laughs> there's some good chess here, though. Definitely some good chess. This tournament I'm playing the next weekend, brutally strong. Brutally strong. Can I challenge two, or are we done? Um, I think we, I'm going to play for at least 10 more minutes, so there'll probably be one more game at least. Let's, um, I don't know what to do here. Let's play that now. I don't really know what to do in these positions. You know, at some point I want to be fancy and play like B4. Maybe that point has now come. Uh... That's really interesting. That's probably dumb. So let's just do a3. And let's play b4. And you ask, b4 what? And I say, that's just a dumb chess joke. Yeah, that's, that's what it's like hanging out with me, people. He takes, I guess, I wouldn't have wanted to do that. I wouldn't have wanted to try uh, c4 just to keep things closed. But maybe you can play chess like this. All right, f3. Queen d7, good move. Let's say check to the miserable queen. He says all right, I say all right. Yeah, and it's maybe fair to say that I don't have anything special here, I don't know. You know, my instinct is I should be better, but I don't, you know, things are, things aren't that easy here. Right, the argument is really about the bishop on b7. And now I'm going to claim that I'm going to sack the pawn and enter. This might not be true. It is what I'm doing, however. <laughs> yeah, this is real spicy. If he takes, I honestly don't know whether I'm going to go to d6 or c7. I think he's got to take. I don't see any other way. Well, yeah, I think he's got to take. Oh, this is a little spicier than I wanted it to be. Yeah. All right, I'm going to claim this is what I want. This is getting getting malignant. This is real this is real close. I don't know what's happening here. I have no idea. In fact, I'm going to say he's doing all right. I wasn't sure about that one. Let's let's double on the C file because that's what they told me to do. This is yeah. This is I don't know, guys. This I'm 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 not feeling it here. I'm not feeling. It. In fact, Rook C three. I think there's a problem with that move. 
a strategic problem. I thought f5 would have been nice because if I took his, his bishop would have molested me. All right, this is intense. I'm scared. He can make another claim, though, and just say, I'm not doing all that much here. And if I ever move my bishop on e3 away, he's got uh, bishop c5. So, yeah, I think he's doing great. In fact, my rooks on the c-file, not that impressive. Oh, buddy, Nicola. I, was, I thought we were friends. I thought I was doing all right. Whew. Let's do that. I don't even know what it does. I want to do that. Yeah, I hear you. Just want to gain a little space for the space. And if you take, it'll be bishop as of opposite color. Is it impressive? I don't know. No, oh, this is a good game. This is a good one to go out on. We might get one more after this, but it's a good game to go out on. Now he's coming at me. Ho, oh, people, let it not be my day to die. Let it not be my day to die. All right, let's just bring my king up. He's coming at me. Jeez, take it easy. We're friends and all that, right? All right, knight b5. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely worse in this game. I'm not going to lie to you. But I got more time. What happened here? Rook takes c3. Fine. Snip. Check to the miserable king. Dude, I'm getting wasted. Check to the rook. Ooh, I'm, I'm dying here. Oh, no. Oh, no, people. I was really, I was arrogant with this position because I saw the bishop on b7. And I said, no bueno. But I'm getting hosed here. This is terrible. Oh. Check to the pawn. I'm in trouble here, people. But he does need a couple good moves. Oh. Oh, man, oh, man. He needs a good move here. All right, I think I'm going to say check to the bishop. That'll at least give him thinking. I think I'm winning now because I'm going to take that pawn on e5 and then I get to move my rook. And I, you know, this bishop was no bueno. Maybe rook a3 with the cheap bishop e2 shot, but, you know. Whew. Nice. Nicola, that was a good game, man. Good game. All right. That's right. G5 was a good thing here. Just A2 here. Check to the miserable clock. That's right. Whew. I thought I was just, I was just like relaxing on that one and stuff. All right. Uh, could I play one more, you and me and your best friend? Q, chess gremlin too. And then that'll be it. That'll be it. And I'm going to, I'm going to have to take, I'm not going to take a nap, but you know. Here we go. E4, my friend. Bam! That's what I played when I was a kid. It makes me feel youthful when I do it. Youthful and dumb, but still youthful. Boom! That's a good move. Did we already do this once? I know I did it against someone. I can't remember who it was. I'm sweating. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, everybody. This has been a fun event for me. Here, I'm going to even type that into the box here. It's been a pleasure. I hope they let me do this again, because this was fun. Yeah, was, you know, cool thing about hanging out with people online, they can turn you on to stuff. Like, Bloop turned me on to uh, the Chess 960 stuff, and that was cool. A6. I'm like I said, I'm prejudiced. I'm a tempo fiend. I'm prejudiced. Look at those beautiful knights. Look at all those squares they control. I'll probably get mated because I say all this stuff. Yeah, back in the day we'd hit him with E5 eventually. This is probably playable. You know, this is kind of like a hedgehog without the C pawns. That's kind of cool. I never thought of it that way. This is a hedgehog without the steep bones. All right, now he's getting a little frisky. 
All right, let's play over here. Getting frisky. Who are we hosting next? That was cool. Rakesh, thank you, man. Thank you for all the help you gave. All right, DE5. Good move. I don't know what to do against that. Let's kick the knight. He's coming in. Kaminsky Park. Oh, it's not very pleasurable. All right, my knight's just going to wheel around. He's just going to wheel around. That's all he wants. Nothing fancy. Am I a little bit better? I'd like to believe so. Um, let's do this move. Just so I don't have to decide immediately with the knight, you know. Yeah, thanks, Ron. Go follow Jesse. That's right. Go follow Jesse at Twitch TV. I got my Wednesday show, and as I said before, end of the month we do our show with uh, listeners, and I just cover people's games. It's a variety of levels, so you shouldn't feel bad about making some terrible moves. In fact, I would say, if anything, don't submit some game where you felt you were a genius. You know, Submit some game where you have earnest questions about what was going on. That's my advice for doing the show. All right, I got things like knight f3, knight b3. These are my these are my basic issues in life here. You, me, and your best friend. Bishop b7. All right, well then we're going to play knight f3. I guess he's going to do queen b6, though. And I have... There's questions about what I'm doing here. It's not so easy. On queen b6, I'm going to hit the guy with a4. Bam! Now, the problem with bishop b7, let's say, is that uh, your bishop didn't really want to be hitting the rock. So you probably wanted to at least keep your options open with something like that. Now I'm going to take... And... I want to, now knight f5 is looking real, real aggressive. Plus, I got knight c6. When I'm analyzing with my friend Josh Vidal, I get knight c6 in. He has to resign because, you know, the guy won't normally resign. So we need to come up with a mechanism to force him to resign. And that's the mechanism. I get knight c6, he's got to give up. Nicola, I'd love to come back. Yeah. Like I said, I do the show, and um, a lot of times I do some stuff with, like, Yermo. We cover some chess events. Um, but yeah, I love coming on here. This was a fun thing. This kind of, even though it's too hot today, I was saying it's too hot, I did have my spin drift, and it was for the most part a pretty relaxing experience, so I was thankful for all that. All right, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Let's, let's block that queen from coming over to mess with me. That was a real lazy move, but I did it. At some point, I'm going to play like, I don't even know what I'm going to do. But knight f5 is looking real appealing. So let's go ahead and put the knight in. Really, I didn't need h3. But I don't think black could do much on the file. I'm going to play like queen f3, g4, g5, something like that. Bishop h6, mate. Yeah, Iran works hard, man. They work him over there at chess.com real tough. Never gets any time to himself. And I think that's a mistake. I think he was thinking that this knight is hanging. But now I'm going to go like this. Bam! And I've got two threats. Two threats. One is mate and the other one is touching that queen. <laughs> Thanks, Iran. That was so sweet, man. I think it's done. Guys, thank you so much. That was a beautiful time. I hope to do it again. Come check out the show. Uh, and wish me good luck next weekend. It's going to be real tough for me playing the geniuses of the world. So knight h6, check to the miserable king. I think we're going to get another check to the miserable king here. Check to the miserable queen. And I got it. 
Check to the miserable bishop. All right, he gave up. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, I'd love to do it again, and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.